Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 42 of Kerbal Space Endeavor. Thank you guys for all of the feedback, and I am not going to go to all of the biomes on EVE. I just wanted to show one little thing here, and as you can see right there, we're going to have some water close by. And I want to show you guys the capability of my super awesome EVE rover to be able to go through water as well. And that's why we're going to go and drive over there. Now, to some other things while we watch myself drive there and scoop up some um, carbonite while we're driving so we can have the engines working later on. I would like to thank Nicholas Gutierrez for being my 600th subscriber and for suggesting the name for the, um, let's call it the Eve Lander that is back there trying to escape later. We're going to name from now on the Purple Haze. Now if we zoom out here, we're not going to see much because it's nighttime. And I don't really want to skip ahead until it's daytime because then I lose, well, time for the matter. So we're just going to use SATCOM here for navigating and getting closer to... Okay, that is maybe a little bit zoomed in too much, but we'll see. So yeah, we're going to skip almost all of the biomes, we're just gonna go to the water biome over there, or just the watery area, and then we'll continue on to the more interesting things. And that is, while we're on our way to the water area, I was trying to get up the kind of slopes here, and I just used the engines as an extra um, thrust or power source for that matter. Not only because it makes me get up the hill a lot quicker, but also I do not have any solar panels here. And even if I did, they wouldn't help me because there is no sun out at the moment. And the four wheels that we have here actually consume quite the amount of power. But the two carbonite engines on the side are producing electricity. So that's why we're going to use them. Moving on, we actually do reach the area right here where we have found some water. And as we draw closer, we're going to get rid of this time warp right here and watch as we slowly, or actually way too fast, enter the water area. And it is floating, nothing broke off, or so it seems. Well, we had a little bit of a splashdown, but um, yeah, it should be fine. Let's turn on the engines. Well, actually, let's turn off the two wheels in the front, so when we press forward or sideways, we're not consuming electricity, because electricity is actually starting to run low on the craft right here. So, as you can see, we're thrusting up the engines, and we're floating! actually fairly quickly. If I do remember, we should be able to reach about 10 meters per second without any real trouble. And we should be able to turn and twist as we do like without incident, let's hope. And now you know why I put the uh, air intakes in the front of the craft. So these are usually used for flotation and they seem to hold it up so we're not diving down into the water and breaking apart. So let's see how far we can go out. Well actually it seems like we did lose two things here. But as you can see the craft is definitely capable of not only going on land or it is also capable of going on water. So we can now call it an amphibious craft I would say. So now I think we tested this more than enough so let's try and get back to the shore as quickly as possible. And as you can see it turns fairly quickly and all works fine. Whoa. Or not? Okay, we lost. No, we lost. 
both engines. Okay, I call it semi-successful. We can drive in a straight line, but we shouldn't turn too quickly with this. Well, that's unfortunate, because now we're in the middle of whatever this fluid actually is, because it's definitely not water. Probably some kind of acid or... Who knows? It's Eve. If it doesn't try to kill you while trying to re-enter, it's going to kill you by trying to take a swim. But that is what I came up with as a solution, because I can't get my purple haze into the water. Well, I probably could, but I do not want to try it. And we even have here... Wait, what? That is actually science data from the mountains, not from any lakes or anything. Well, that's unfortunate. <sighs> okay, so yeah, we're going to go and swim to shore. Unfortunately. Very unfortunately. Or, was it unfortunate? I think it's unfortunate. Eey, my English today. Really, really. Okay, let's swim to the shore. And as you can see, we do make it. I just skipped here a little bit. And... Now that we have our Billy Bobbery over here, we have to get our second Kerbal back to the shore line as well. And we're also going to skip here a little bit because watching Kerbal swim is not the most fascinating thing, even if the animations are actually quite funny. So yeah, we have both of them on shore here and they're going to blind each other with their headlights. And now we're going to have to switch back to our master pilot or crash test dummy number one, Jebediah Kerman in the purple haze. So yeah, we're going to start up the engines and then make a fairly quick jump to our location over there. Now the landing area will be a little bit tricky since all of the area is a little bit slopey, but okay, hold on. We have a little bit of a problem here. We're also stumbling over the surface. I should have probably turned on the lights to have a better visual of the surface. But we do have a lift off using the one and two engines, only the atmospheric ones. We didn't use the carbonite uh, rocket engines yet. So yeah, we our target is quite a bit away, but flying there should be no trouble at all. And once again, we skip a little bit ahead, also this time post-edited, time accelerated to see as we're going to go in, or as we're trying to go in, for a landing fairly close to our guys. Now this was a little bit tricky of a maneuver, so that is why I'm going to show it to you guys. So I was kind of skipping over the surface, and as you can see, it is a pretty, pretty steep slope right here, but in the end, we bounce around a little bit, but we do have a successful landing. Jebediah is our man. Now, what we have to do is get our Kerbals on board, but since that is not that interesting, we are going to skip when we have already launched and everybody is on board. Now, before I want to get into space or attempt to go into space, we're going to find an area that is a lot better for taking off, because on a side slope, trying to take off with 7,800 units of carbonite can be very deadly, especially on a planet such as Eve, where gravity wants to kill you already. Now, after using the atmosphere to refuel the entire craft, we are pretty much good to go and... Well, actually, no, we still have to refuel it. There we go. Fueling up liquid fuel and oxidizer because that is possible because we have a little module inside that lets us turn carbonate into liquid fuel and oxidizer. Now we are ready. Now it is time for liftoff. Let's retract the ladder and now it is time to launch. Engines one and two. Get rid of the brakes full thrust and let's hope there's not too many bumps or we're going to explode. 
and it doesn't show us how much delta V we have left. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, a little bit dangerous here. Oh, no, not again, not again. I actually tried finding an area that is f certainly... Whoa! Oh, okay, okay. I, I, I think we did it. We made it. <laughs> All right, we are flying. And our carbonite consumption is very low, just running on these atmospheric carbonite engines. And okay, we still have to switch our staging here. We do want to separate uh, pretty much the entire wings and everything once we are done using the atmosphere. And then we just have the main part of the ca craft keep flying. Now, I'm going to spoil a little bit here and I'm going to call this my first attempt. Now, my first attempt took about 50 minutes, which I'm not going to show entirely to you. That's we're going to skip to the more interesting thing. Now, as I reach about 30,000 kilometers, well, at the moment it's 28,000, you've seen we have already used up quite a bit of carbonite, which is about an eighth of the fuel we have used. And now that my atmospheric engines are starting to stall, we use the main engines, main uh, rocket carbonite engines. And as you can see, it is eating through my carbonite supply fairly quickly. Now, if you're asking why I didn't start out from a mountain area and try to go from that into space, which is probably a smart idea because then you have less atmosphere to go through, I will pretty much show you why I didn't do that in my second attempt. But right now, let's stick to this one. Now, as we kind of consume the last little bit of carbonite, we have to get rid of our extra weight. So, we are going to turn on the next set of engines, the liquid fuel and oxidizer engines, and then we're going to have to separate. Now, I still want to push a little bit further, so we're going to go into space while we still have our wings attached, just because I've had some instability issues when I detached too early. So we're just gonna go thrust a little bit here and then detach. There we go. And now you see the main craft that is still going to be left and go into space and hopefully rendezvous with the EVE man mission, which was going to take our good Kerbals here back home. Now, things don't always turn out as I want them to. As I said, I tested this craft a lot of times and I only made it into space while testing it once. So this is my first attempt of trying to get it into space. Now sadly this is also on the dark side of the planet and we haven't really circularized our orbit as you can see in the top left corner of the screen. Our periaps is technically outside of the surface but definitely out not outside the atmosphere. And I already used all of my monopropellant that is within the craft to push myself a little bit higher. But it's not working. So I thought, well, let's try the old pushing technique where we're trying to push our orbit a little bit higher. And as you can see, we actually do make a little bit of a progress here but it is definitely not going to be enough. So I thought, okay, how can we save our three curvals here and yeah, well, I came up with a solution. And that solution encompasses trying to get away just using the EVA uh, suit. So, as you can see in the top left corner of the screen, apps and periaps are rising and we will be able to make it off EVE using the last little bit of fuel supplies it seems that we have. Now, I am doing this for three Kerbals, and I have to be actually very quick about this. And, uh, well, you, you, you have guessed it already, the next problem ensues. And, as you can see, um, while I got my second Kerbal into orbit, I tried switching back to the craft that was in a deorbit uh, maneuver, and it wouldn't let me. 
and it was gone. And that means Jebediah would be dead. And I can't really let Jebediah die. Nobody can let Jebediah die. Jebediah is a badass. We cannot let him die. So we're going to try all of this again. So yeah, attempt number two. This time though, I'm doing a little bit of a, whatchamacallit, um, a cheating version or yeah it's not really cheating what is happening is I have my carbonite collectors or air scoops in front of my craft right I had them turn on the entire time when I did my first flight where I didn't use time acceleration now as I am time acceleration in flight as you can see in the top right corner of the screen my carbonite deposit in my craft is actually increasing so I could fly high up in the atmosphere with time acceleration and I'd still be collecting carbonite which gives me a little bit more delta V when I reach the uh, altitude where I have to get rid of my main stage and just use the thrusters. So yeah this is different about the second attempt and let's see if I make it this time. And once again, we reach about 30,000 kilometers. My number one engines, which only work at a lower altitude, cut out and we start up the main engines. This time I have a very low uh, approach at this altitude. As you can see, we're flying in about 10, 15 degrees here. And you can see in the top right corner of the screen, my carbonite is or has been full at the altitude of 30,000, which gives me a much better chance of getting in orbit. Since the last time I tried it, I was missing maybe about 100 meters per second of delta V, which is not much, and I should be able to get that this time. Now, we had another successful separation, and as you can see, our periaps is rising out of the atmosphere. We need to be at least at 95 kilometers at periaps and apoaps, and then we will be safe from the deadly atmosphere that there is. And as you can see, we made it, and we actually do still have a little hunk of chunk of fuel left and we're gonna use this to climb into a little bit of a higher orbit so it will be easier for us to try to have an docking maneuver or an encounter for that matter but let's jump ahead to when it is more interesting once again now the purple haze is parked in orbit and this here is the gilly lander that has been you have guessed it to gilly and it is returning now, I am doing this before I'm trying to collect my three kerbals that have been to the surface because the inclination between the manned mission which is going to take us back to Kerbin and the Gilly Lander is less than it is to get to the Purple Haze. So we're trying to collect the Gilly Lander before we're going to go and get the Purple Haze. Now, fortunately, I packed enough fuel into this small little lander here, so we were able to do this very inefficient maneuvering that I am doing here. But yeah, it was uh, pretty straightforward, so I guess we can just skip it to when it is more interesting. Unfortunately, all of this was happening on the dark side of the planet, so I wasn't really able to show much of what's going on here. But pretty much you see we are docking with the main craft, or at least we're attempting to, but we're bouncing into things. So I have to detach again and then move around a little bit. So we are able to get there. But once again, we kind of have a problem here because the antenna is in the way. But after we folded it up, we have a successful docking, transferring a lot of things around, especially the crew and then we are going to continue on to the next thing and the next thing that we have to do here is have a little bit of a change in our orbit so we do actually have an encounter with the purple haze or what's left of the purple haze the main stage of the purple haze as we would like to call it and yeah we're just gonna ditch the excessive fuel tanks that we have here 
and we're gonna continue on our merry way until we have an encounter. Unfortunately, we once again have another maneuver happening on the dark side of the planet, and therefore it is dark, and you guys probably don't see too much, at least uh, not that much. It's just some green and red lights, and some crew transfers, and a little bit extra of science, but nothing really special. Now, yeah, we just collect some science here and there, collect the last little bit that we need. It doesn't really matter, since we're maxed out on science already, everything that I'm doing here is just for fun. Moving on, we are trying to see if we can get back home. And as you can see here, I already set up a maneuver for getting back to Kerbal. Or actually, sorry, Kerbin. Kerbal is the sun. And now all I have to do is start burning. And technically, I should have enough. I should have enough fuel. But we're going to ditch the purple haze and leave it in orbit here. And we're just going to take the drive stage right here. Get a little bit away. And then, as you can see, we have more than enough Delta V to get back to Kerbin, hopefully. But it also means we have uh, enough Delta V to maybe try a little bit of a more aggressive approach, since uh, the next window of opportunity to go back to Kerbin, so the transfer window from EVE to Kerbin, would be more than a year. And I don't really want to have our guys sit here for a year and be bored out of their minds. So I set up this maneuver here, which hopefully uh, is going to get us back to Kerbin in a decent amount of time. And so we have here our burn to leave Eve's orbit. And I'm just going to show you guys what is in here in the main drive and it has some life support and it has some purifiers and air filters on board to for any case if we would have stayed longer. I think we had enough uh, life support to last us for 3000 days but I like to be a little bit more excessive on my supply. But yeah, as you can see this was our first burn. We are going to have a encounter with Kerbin. I fixed the second maneuver node that we're having. And so instead of waiting for a year to leave Eve, we're going to leave Eve right now. And we will be back at Kerbin in one year instead of two, which is fortunate because I'm pretty sure these guys would be bored. But I get to see you guys in the next episode. Thank you for tuning in. And most of all, thank you guys for all of the good feedback.